the sky. And in just a few moments, we're going to reach peak heating and peak deceleration. That's at 32 G-forces, punishing G-force on our SRC, a phenomenal view of that streaking SRC coming in across the sky. That parachute deployment was given internally by the spacecraft. All of what you're seeing now is autonomous on board that SRC. The team on the... The team on the WB-57 doing... EDL, miles down, we have touched down. I repeat, EDL, SRC has touched down. And touchdown of the OSIRIS-REx sample return capsule. A journey of a billion miles to asteroid Bennu and back has come to an end. Marking American pieces of the asteroid Bennu. You see the reaction there just moments ago as they got that sample back on the ground. This is the team at Lockheed celebrating that momentous achievement of getting that sample from oh, <laughs> the SRC, landing about three minutes ahead of when we had originally predicted. Actually approach this sample, check the area for any unexploded ordinances, UXOs, that could possibly be out there on the range. And then also make sure that that... As I mentioned, that first person on scene will be the on-scene commander, Stu Wiley. He'll be doing an environmental sweep. We're getting a nice close-up view. You can see the parachute disconnected. You can see some of the wiring of it. There, just a little, are pieces of the asteroid Bennu. We'll be getting access to those samples in just a few days and actually seeing exactly what we got from the asteroid regolith. This Hilo-1 has landed. At the recovery site. So our first helicopter, you just heard confirmation, and you can see visual confirmation of that landing. We're maybe about 100, 200 feet away. And we are here today at the Dugway Proving Ground in Utah, in the room and on the phone line. We have with us Lori Glade. Uh, we just appreciate everyone coming along with us to celebrate NASA's first ever asteroid sample return. It has been incredible. But we think we've got a lot of sample in that, in that science canister, and we can't wait to, to crack into it. For me, the real science is just beginning. I grew up as a laboratory chemist, studying meteorites and particles from the Stardust mission, which NASA brought back in 2006. So I really am looking forward to the next stages of this journey. Uh, people have asked about you know, the planetary protection. We did go through extensive planetary protection reviews. We were unrestricted Earth return because Bennu is a near-Earth asteroid. Probably material from this asteroid has been delivered to the Earth at some point in the past. It's also a very small body that's constantly exposed to ionizing radiation, and no life forms that we, we know of would be able to survive that kind of environment. So very, very low uh, risk. In fact, we're more worried about Earth biology contaminating the sample. The key objective for me, and one of the driving objectives of this program, is to try to understand, did carbon-rich asteroids like Bennu deliver the compounds that may have led to the origin of life on our planet. And certainly something that's on the top of many people's minds um, at this point as we near the end of the fiscal year. We currently have a, a team of spacecraft engineers, scientists, and uh, curatorial personnel working right now in a temporary clean room here at Dugway to make the sample capsule ready for transport down to the Johnson Space Center so that we can open it up and reveal this treasure. The, the entry into the um, uh, clean room has been, uh, uh, has gone extremely well. They're processing the capsule, uh, removing portions of the um, uh, canister so that they can get a a uh, continuous flow of nitrogen. Well choreographed sequence, and um, I'm happy to report that the uh, 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 sample canister was put on purge uh, today, a little bit before one o'clock, and uh, so we now have a, a continuous flow of nitrogen 
within that uh, science canister, and we are well on the way to uh, s getting that science canister ready for transport down to the Johnson Space Center. And the, the, the support that we are providing to the science and engineering teams today is documenting the handling, ensuring that we understand the, uh, uh, the environment that the uh, uh, science canister is in and uh, um, making way for once these samples are uh, taken to the Johnson Space Center, we'll be able to re start removing them, deintegrating the, the science canister, evaluating those samples and providing them to uh, the scientific community. Is it for things like this to inspire even the generation after that? So I'm going to be looking for the basics. Are there clay minerals there? Are there carbonate minerals? Are there organic molecules? Do we see the iron oxides, the other things that we predicted on the asteroid surface? I'm sure there's going to be surprises in there. Once you get into the dust scale, you will probably start to see a wide level of diversity. But it's kind of like a sneak peek of what might be in store for us. Uh, we don't know if the dust, what we call the fines, there's intermediates, courses, and large stones. There might be variations in mineralogy and composition by particle size. The larger ones may be more robust to disaggregation and the loose stuff, like the one we crushed when we tagged the surface may be preferentially in the fine grain component. So it really is to give us a sense of what are we dealing with? Are we way out of the box in terms of what we built this big plan around? Or does it look like, yeah, we got it pretty close. There's some surprises, but we can still continue with the sample analysis plan that we laid out. Not hearing you yet, Marsha. When there is a government shutdown, we've been through this many times before, um, all of our operating missions get accepted. Um, we know that uh, they uh, are incredibly valuable assets, and so we generally get an exception for that um, to protect, um, protect property, um, which they are, and, and so APEX will continue operations um, as, as normal. You still have to go to the thermal properties in Yarkovsky to really get a complete solution.